Hi, everybody. We're going to get started here. Uh, my name is Nicole. This is Angela. We're here from the WHA Virtual Library, and today we're going to be presenting to you about how to use Zotero to manage your references. So let's talk a little bit uh, about Zotero. Zotero is a free citation manager or reference manager. It's uh, a system that allows you to store your references. So as you're doing research or updating a policy and collecting citations, you can uh, collect them in this reference manager. You can also create bibliographies. It'll format them for you into any uh, style that you require and allows you to manage your any PDFs that you're collecting as well. So Zotero is, a, is there's many uh, citation managers out there. You can uh, purchase EndNote or RefWorks, for example, but the nice thing about Zotero is that it's free. Uh, once you install Zotero and create an account, you can easily uh, save your re, uh, all your references into the cloud, and that means that you can access them across any device. So you can uh, go to another computer, use your computer at home, and still be able to access your files or um, at work as well. So you do need to download Zotero, and you do need to set up an account in Zotero in order to uh, access all of these features. So the website for Zotero is www.zotero.org. If you go to that uh, site, you will then see uh, this web page and you simply click on the download button. Um, I do want to mention that uh, once you do download it, you, are, you have 300 megabytes of free space, uh, which is free. But if you needed to upgrade, I think two, megabyte, uh, two gigabytes of data is only $20 a month. But uh, you probably will do pretty well with 300 yeah. uh, megabytes of free storage. Um, so if once you hit the download page, it will recognize uh, whether you're in uh, Firefox or Chrome. So that's the nice thing about that. And you will be presented with these two options. So you do need to download Zotero 5.0. And we would highly recommend the connector as well, once you download Zotero to install the Firefox connector. Nicole will be talking about that a little bit more, but basically what that does is uh, it uh, installs a small widget, which uh, as you're browsing through the web, it will detect any PDFs. And if there's a PDF that you want to save, you by a click of that connector button, uh, it easily puts it into your uh, fire uh, into your Zotero folder. Yeah, and I just wanted to mention, as Angela said, it's detected what uh, programs we were using to create this screencast. So it says Windows and it says Firefox here, but that's not the only system it's available for. You can get the downloadable software for Mac and for yeah. Linux as well. And then the connector is also available in some other browsers as well. Yes. So. So there are four main methods that you can use to get your references into Zotero, and we're going to be talking about each one. First off, you can import a file that you've downloaded from uh, one of the databases or from a different reference management software. You can use an identifier like a DOI or an ISBN, and we'll be talking a little bit more about what that means. You can use the Zotero connector that Angelo was just discussing, or you can enter it manually. So say I wanted to download this PubMed file. Uh, I've highlighted here on the screen three different options for me to do that. Of course, I could use the information that's available on the screen here to manually enter this reference if for some reason it wasn't available to be um, entered elsewhere. But uh, in the center box there is the send to option. A lot of different databases will have uh, ways to download citations. So in PubMed, it's the send to option. And this allows you to download a file that can be uploaded to any citation manager. Uh, down in the lower left, we have our different identifiers. So PubMed has what's called a PMID or a PubMed ID. And if you look at the URL that's shown at the top of the screenshot, it's, you'll notice that the number in that URL is the same as the number shown in the red box in the lower left. That's the PMID. 
So if you went, wanted to find any PubMed article and you had that PMID, you would just copy that number into the URL bar or into the PubMed search and you'd be able to find it like that. It's a persistent identifier, so it's going to be the same. Even if you come back a week later, a month later, a year later, it should still be coming up with this same record. Similarly, the DOI, this is a digital object identifier. It's used for things like journal articles that are published online. And just like the PMID, it's a persistent identifier. So if you go to that DOI a year later, it should still come up with the same article. Uh, different types of publications will have different types of identifiers. For example, a book typically won't have a uh, DOI, but it will typically have what's called an ISBN, which is a standardized book number which is 10 or 13 digits that's uh, persistently identify the book and typically also the particular edition that you're looking at. Finally, up in the top right, we have our zero tarot connector icon. Here it's showing at, like a piece of paper because it's recognized that this is a, in fact an article that you want to download. If you were looking at some other type of source, you see it look different. For example, if you were on a YouTube page and you wanted to save a citation to a YouTube video, you would see that that icon looks more like a video icon. If you are on a Google Books page and you want to save that book, it would look like a book and so on and so forth. So it automatically recognizes what type of citation you're looking at because that will help it determine what information it needs to download. So here's what this actually looks like on the Zotero side. So on the top, we have the import file option, and I've gotten to that by clicking on file and import in Zotero. So it'll uh, walk you through how you import a particular file type. And on the bottom, I've got the identifier option. So there's that little icon on the top bar that looks like a magic wand. You just click on that and you can copy in any identifier that is used for that particular item and it will automatically complete the citation for you. Finally, we've got our Zotero connector. So I've clicked on uh, that icon in the top right, and this is what's popped up. So it says saving to uh, brain injury rehabilitation. It says that because that's the name of the particular collection that I have open in Zotero at this time. If I was accidentally in the wrong collection, I could use that drop down bar uh, to select a different collection to save the citation to. Uh, you would want to have established the collection in Zotero first, and we'll talk in a little bit about what that looks like. Uh, under that, we see the information for the citation that I'm saving. Uh, beneath that, it says PubMed entry. That's actually saving a screenshot of the website that I'm looking at right now. So that can be really helpful if uh, PubMed's unlikely to do this, but if you're looking at another type of website that maybe goes down, it'll actually save the screenshots for you so you can go back later and see what exactly you were looking at. And then this particular citation has an open access PDF. So Zotero is actually automatically grabbing that and saving it with the citation. So if later you go back, you'll actually have saved the full text PDF of this particular article with your citation. The other cool thing about the Zotero connector is if you're on a search result page, you can actually save multiple articles at the same time. So you see here, I'm on a pet PubMed search results page and that icon now looks like a file folder. So when I click on that, I get this menu that pops up. I can select as many or as few of the items on this list that I want and automatically save multiple citations at the same time. So if you're doing a, a more systematic search or you want to save a bunch of citations, um, this is a really time efficient way of doing that. So this is what the Zotero interface actually looks like. This is the Zotero 5.0 that you've downloaded onto your computer. On the left hand side, is our citation collections. So you use collections to manage different reference lists according to the project that you're working on um, or whatever else. You create a new collection using that file plus icon that's just under the file menu. And then you'll see on the left-hand side of the screen, that's the list of the various collections that I have created in my Zotero. Uh, in the center, you have the list of references that are in the particular collection that you're in at the moment. So you see we've got that one that I've just saved and we also have some other ones that I had saved previously. You can sort these by title, by creator, by year, whatever else. Uh, on the right hand side, we see the information for the particular citation that I've got highlighted. Uh, so you've got your item type, you've got your title, author, etc. You can change any of that information. So for example, if it hasn't captured an abstract, you want to add one, you can definitely do that there. Uh, you can add notes to a particular item or you can add tags. 
you can also add attachments. So this, if this one hadn't captured a PDF, but I had saved a PDF on my computer and I wanted to add that, you could do that here. Uh, in the middle, that little pop-up is what you see if you right-click on a citation. So here you have the option to view the PDF or view the online version, add an attachment, uh, export an item if I want to send it to a different reference management software, and also create bibliography. So you can create a bibliography for a single item or for multiple items at once, and that can be in pretty much any citation style you can think of. So they've got MLA, they've got APA, they've got Chicago, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're pretty good at coding, you can also actually create a custom citation style by using uh, what is called the citation style language or CSL. And that is available under the tools interface. A couple other icons I want to point out here. We already mentioned the magic wand icon, which is where you would enter your identifiers. To the left of that, there's that green plus icon. That's if you want to manually enter a citation. And what that'll do is that'll pop up uh, different types of citations. So you could select a journal article, you could select a book, and then it'll populate on the right hand side a blank slate where you could enter all of the information for that particular article. You also have the ability to search your library for particular uh, authors or titles or tags. And finally, on the top right, we see that green circle uh, arrow icon. That's the sync icon. So if you've logged into a Zotero account, you can sync this with your online library and also with uh, your Zotero uh, download on any other computers that you might have used. So for example, if you have your work computer, you have your home computer, you use that sync icon to uh, coordinate between those different versions of Zotero. So there's a few different cool tools that you can use with Zotero. One of the ones I wanted to mention was the Word integration. Uh, this is shown here in Microsoft Word, but it's also available for some other word processing programs. And what this actually allows you to do is um, insert a citation in any citation style into a live document that you're editing. So you see I've added a footnote to the content that I am sourcing and I've started typing in the title in that little search box that pops up and it automatically located in my library uh, the citation that it thinks I'm referring to. So I would just select that and I could create a citation to that particular article in any citation style. This also allows you uh, to change the citation style of your document with a single click. So rather than having to go through each individual citation, figure out, okay, this is in MLA, I wanna change it to APA, what do I need to change, yada, 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 and it takes forever, just don't do that you can use this tool to automatically change them all at the same time. So it's really useful if you're writing a submission for a journal maybe, and you want to change what journal you're submitting to, then maybe they have different citation styles that they use. This tool can really save you a lot of time in doing that. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Angela to talk a bit more about some of the other tools available for Zotero. Yes, so there are plenty of other features with Zotero, uh, just to briefly give you an idea of what they are. Uh, if you're familiar with RSS feeds, if you have a re uh, feed reader and you're using that to uh, keep yourself up to date from your favorite journal, let's say, as you're, scroll as you're screening those items, you could quickly save them into Zotero using your connector button. Uh, also, uh, with if you're not on the internet but you want to have us retain a... Uh, a snapshot of the web page that you're on, you can do that as well in Zotero. Just click on the uh, on snapshots and save that web page, and you can still open it without being on the internet. Uh, you can also access your library online, so you do need to set that up uh, and have syncing set up, uh, but once you arrange that, you can then access your library anywhere online. I think we mentioned that before. So if you uh, set this up you're on your desktop at work, you can still connect to your uh, files by going online at home, let's say. Uh, I also want to mention that you can add citations from the online interface. It's just a little more cumbersome to do that. Yeah. So let's say you're working in groups, as you often do, uh, uh, on a journal article or putting a policy together. Uh, you can share your uh, files as well. So rather than creating a separate file or library, as they call it in Zotero, you could actually create a group. And that allows you to uh, set it up as to who can see it and who can edit. And that way, 
several of you can work on the same file at the same time. Uh, another nice feature about Zotero is they've partnered, and I think this is fairly recently, with uh, site, uh, Retraction Watch, which is a database of articles that have been retracted. So let's say you've done some research and all of a sudden one of the articles has been retracted for whatever reason, uh, error, or they've discovered uh, yeah, an error in their, in their uh, calculations, uh, they'll retract that citation. You wouldn't want to actually be using that in your perhaps, perhaps in your paper or in your policy update. So when you're in Zotero, it will uh, notify you that that has been retracted, as well as when you're trying to use it in your paper, if you're citing, it will indicate to you that that article has been retracted uh, and you can uh, make a correction there. Yeah, this is super useful because databases aren't always the best at yes. showing you when something's been retracted. Like they'll usually have a retraction notice, but it might yes. be a separate record mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the original record. So you might not see it immediately. So this is really helpful in notifying you about that change to the record. Mm -hmm. So Zotero is a free uh, service. And with that comes a whole community of people that are creating what they call different plugins, little things that help Zotero work better or do something extra. So there's quite a few of them out there. Uh, you do have to sometimes be careful which one that you're using, make sure it's reputable and, and doesn't interfere with the operation of your computer. But one of the ones I'd like to mention is Zotfile. So Zotfile allows you to uh, automatically rename uh, any attachment that you put into Zotero. Sometimes when you download an attachment into Zotero, it will have a name that's not very user-friendly. It could be just meaningless. A, it could be just a bunch of numbers. So with this, you could set it up so that it automatically changes the name for you. Uh, you can move uh, your attachments as well around and, uh, and sync it in your Zotero library so that once again, uh, you can access it from any device, and you can also uh, highlight. Uh, it allows has a feature where it allows you to highlight within the PDF and create annotations. So that's uh, one of the plugins that uh, has been used and uh, would perhaps be useful to you. Is there anything else about Zotpile? Uh, not about Zotpile specifically, but as Angela mentioned, there is a really rich uh, forum of user and a user community out there for Zotero. So if you are running into problems, we're certainly happy to help you out with that. But you can also look at the online forums. Often people will be reporting bugs or promoting um, different plugins, different custom-made citation files that you can download onto your computer. As long as you're careful about what you're using, it can be really helpful if you're not maybe as tech savvy. Um, you maybe don't know how to write a plugin or to use a CSL to create your own citation style. This online community can be super helpful to you in um, kind of elaborating on the base Zotero file, which is absolutely super useful. If you want to stick with that, that's great. Mm -hmm. But you can also uh, enhance it with these online uh, plugins or custom citation files or other options that are out there because of this big, great big user mm -hmm. community. Yeah, and that's completely up to you. Yeah. Um, so that's just a brief overview of what Zot uh, Zotero is and can do for you. Um, I think that's it for us. Yep. Are there any questions? Uh, uh, we'd be happy to entertain them. Yep. I'd also like to mention that if you're running into problems with Zotero, as I mentioned, please feel free to contact us at any time. We use Zotero in our own personal practice, or at least I do. Oh, I do too. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, very easy to use. Yeah. Um, definitely happy to help out with anything. We can also use Zotero to create um, a personal literature search for you and share that with you either as a citation file that you can upload to your own Zotero or as a shared library or in whatever format would be most useful to you. So we definitely have lots of options available to you in terms of how we can help you out in your research. Uh, you can check us out online to learn more about that. Mm -hmm. But as Angela said, um, any questions that anyone might have, uh, we'll stick around for a few minutes and see if any pop up. And if not, we'll sign off and welcome you to contact us via email or phone at any time. And this uh, webinar will be recorded, uh, is being recorded, and will be available in the next couple of days on our website as well. So thank you for attending. Thanks, guys.